Good evening, everyone. Evening, sir. Good evening, yeah, sir. Wait, evening. Let's wait for a few minutes, pa, huh? for the others. Still early, no. Sir, I have a question pala. Yeah, was that the one you emailed? Oh, yeah, that one. But I also have another question, sir. So, yeah, your, uh, your, the question you asked sa email, um, I'll cover that in class. No? Okay, got it. Thanks. You're also interested. But okay, go ahead. Yeah, um, the reflection on donut economics, um, the when it, it says share one image with a caption, what type of image is it? Like what? Are you looking for like a cartoon or like a environmental pic or be as creative as you want? Um, uh, anything that would represent your idea. So you can be creative. You can be very straight to the point, or you can be creative. Um, so it's really up to you. Okay, so thanks. Sir. Just trying to be less boring <laughs> yeah. about the mm -hmm. discussion boards. So okay. I. I grade you on the image no, per se, but really more on the para lang it's, 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 it goes beyond words, but feel free to represent your, it's basically a, some, a representation of what, you're, what you want to convey. Para yan. Okay, thanks sir. So yeah, I will now share the screen. Let's give it a minute or two pa. All right, you guys can see my screen, no? I... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure. Yeah. All right, see you guys. Um, it's six o two. See, yeah, uh, we can start. No, there's ten of us. Maybe the others will just join later. Okay. So a few announcements. So I'll be posting module four short shortly, no? So probably um. Most of you are almost done with uh, module three. So just uh, doing the finishing touches now. I may post uh, the first two parts probably uh, earlier uh, and maybe the second half uh, later. But I'll try you know, if I can to post everything by October, uh, before October or by October. So, so I'm not posting it yet to give you guys some breathing space. Now. I say some of you, you know, if you see another module, you wanna you wanna start Kagad. So no, just because you have like six, I think five or six classes at the same time this semester, give you some breathing space. Um, yeah. So, but uh, mind you, module four will be the longest. No? So I, that's one of the things that's you know that's, uh, that I'm grappling with right now. I'm trying, still trying to shorten module four, uh, but I have to comply with the basics. No? Uh, for SOCSI 13, we need to at least teach three topics there, no? agree and agrarian reform, uh, public finance, taxation, and uh, population demography. So I'm still trying to shorten it a bit no? so that it's not super long. So, um, But I'll post that by October 18th. 
So uh, you probably saw your grades already for assignment one. And I'll, um, in the first part of this evening, no, I'll just provide my own observations, no, both uh, substantive and uh, organizational slash writing observations to help you further, no, uh, not just for this course, but in your uh, future papers, assignments, uh, not for this class, other classes, and even your uh, future career. No. So grades have been posted just to um, present to you again the grading system. No? So I like to think of B anywhere from 82 to 86 as good. Uh, B plus is very good and A is outstanding. I didn't really uh, give a lot of A's um, this time around. No? Um, uh, for me to, for you to, for me, no, uh, for you to merit an A, you should really have some, uh, you should have done something really outstanding. But again, B, B plus, that's actually very good already. Um, C plus is also satisfactory. Yung okay naman. So B, B plus. Most of you got B and B plus in this class. So if you're interested in the rubric, the criteria for scoring, no, it's three things. No? I looked at the way you organize things. No? Um, some of you were jumpy, like you keep repeating things. Um, Evaluation, this is the bulk. No, I, I gave organization as 20%, evaluation as 60%. Evaluation meaning how you evaluated the data critically and came up with interventions. No? Um, and, and then writing also is another 20%. No? Uh, was it a cohesive writing? Was it plain? Was it uh, too fa fatty writing? I mean, there's a lot of fat that can be trimmed or yeah, those things. No? Or was it just uh, really large? Uh, or long paragraphs. No? So those who turned in their assignments late, uh, in this class, wala naman. No one got the five-point deduction. Thank you for submitting on time. Yeah. And uh, just in case you feel you didn't get a very high grade for assignment one, um, pangbawi nyo, uh, more or less, would be, of course, your future assignments, assignment two and three. Uh, three assignment three is the FIO, the final integrated output. Discussion boards, no? that's one way by which um, you can make bow it. Uh, I won't grade them per post, no? um, but uh, in aggregate, um, it, it accounts for 20% of class participation. So I will grade them as a whole based on your participation, how thoughtful you are. No? So, I mean, if you answered all, most likely you'll get that full 20%. As long as it's not just answering for answering sake. No? May laman naman, there's... there's there's thought that went into it. Because I will know, no? I read them. So I will know if you, you actually put some thought or you just wanted to beat a deadline. No? By the way, the deadline for all discussion boards is at the end of the semester. Like last hour of the semester, they're still doing it. And, and you know, they're coming up with one-liner things. No? So, yeah. Okay. So some notes, no. I'll start first with the substantive uh, notes, no. Um, first is labor, employment, and income, no. So uh, first, no, and this is for for additional learning, no. Some of these I don't expect you guys to to know no? um, before this course. So okay, lang, no? So treat this as additional learning. And again, feel free to ask questions also no, later. So it's counterintuitive, no? But actually, um, unemployment among the poor is lower than it is for the non-poor. Um, this has been, parang it's a, it's, it's a mystery, di ba? Bakit ganun? Usually associate po poverty with unemployment. Actually, it's the other way around. No? Researchers uh, in the Philippines found out uh, through empirical data surveys, no? actually, the employment, unemployment rates are lower among the poor and uh, and the uh, versus the non-poor. No? So uh, back it, no? you might be wondering. So their explanation is it's actually counterintuitive, but if you think about it, it's the poor who actually uh, cannot wait no? until they find uh, a better job. No? So kumbaga, unemployment, again, just, just to uh, recap, no? Unemployment means you're you don't have a job, but you're looking for one and available. So, um, uh, what do you call this? So, uh, the poor, kasi, yun nga, 
kung wala silang trabaho because they're already poor, no, the next job that comes, no, they have to grab it. So they don't have a choice with regards to jobs, no, whether it's a poor quality job or not. No. The, the non-poor naman, many cases, no, they can choose between jobs. So parang, oh, I'm looking, pero oh, it's not great yet, so I'll look for another one. They can wait. No. So that's, 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 that's the primary reason why unemployment among the poor is actually low. Second point about uh, unemployment. So the labor force no, um, uh, equals number of employed and unemployed. So that's the labor force. Those people who are not in the labor force are people who are not looking for a job or not or are not in a job. Um, so in guys, some people made the mistake no, of dividing, for example, in guys, do not compare the unemployed people, no, let's say 5,000 people unemployed versus the total population. No, you don't do that. You only compare the unemployed people. You divide it by the number of people in the labor force. Because the number of people also, the total population includes students, includes people, housewives, includes people who, who are not looking for a job. So you should not you know, make that the denominator. When you're Comparing and making percentages or proportions, you divide unemployed people divided by the number of people in the labor force. Um, yeah, and then just stop me you know, if you have questions. The next is subsistence poor, and, and I, I saw this in one in a few papers. No, uh, subsistence poor, no the 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 food poor, no that's a subset of the general poor, quote unquote. They're not a distinct group, no. There's not uh, among the poor, no. There's not subsistence poor. Subsistence poor that belongs to that larger bucket or larger category of poor. Because no? some some people made the mistake of saying that uh, it, it, these are two different groups, no. They're not mutually exclusive. No? One is a subset of the other. Uh, those those people who are classified as subsistence poor or food poor are also poor, but they have lower incomes. And the second point about that is, does it mean your income is lower than the food threshold? You're experiencing hunger or food shortage. It's not automatic, especially if you live in the rural areas. No? If you notice, for example, in San Remigio, the food, the incomes are very low. Uh, more than 50% were food poor and more than 60 plus percent were general poor. No? But there was low incidence of food shortage, diba? So that means that they they have access, naman. Not just their incomes just don't are not uh, high enough to 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 uh, hurdle that threshold. And I saw this in many papers, no? especially for your future papers. If you want to prove points, no, don't give numbers. Use percentages. Uh, because by using percentages in social science, so the parang ano yan eh? um, uh, di ba there? Parang COVID, di ba? Parang oh, they're saying, wow, you know, the Philippines um, has at least last month, no, has like twenty plus thousand new cases per day. Pero you divide that to the total population if you want to compare it with other countries. Let's say there's a country of let's say five million people only, and they have. 100 cases only. So you have to compare apples and apples. So percentages are king. Usually in social science, you have to divide it by something to give context to it. And the good thing is when you do percentages and you line up all of these indicators, then you can see exactly what are the most alarming ones. What are the highest in terms of, um, sorry. What are the highest uh, or more problematic Sorry, more problematic uh, indicators. So use that, no? And this is a good tip for your future classes, no? Especially if it's a uh, social science or even management. No? Parang sa ano yan, sa when you're doing finance, no? When you're doing ratios, no? Sa accounting, I think, uh, in your second year when you did accounting, there were some financial ratios. Gano, same thing, no? You put things into context by uh, dividing it. With something, and of course, if you're 
if you're doing a paper, if you're talking about data, you include it in the paper. Some of you went straight. No, there's, sir, there's problem here. There. No, you have to include it because it's a formal paper. Right? You have to include what you're talking about. In terms of interventions, uh, mind you, governments are not supposed to provide, you know, directly provide employment. Most of the employment should come from the private sector, from the businesses. Governments need to create what we call enabling environment. By last week, no, and I have additional input here later. No? Last week, I think we had a good discussion before we ended on investment climate. No, I say someone asked, no, sir, why is manufacturing manufacturing natin or investment? No? Is it because government wanted it to be that way? No, it's because of our, we're not attractive. No? Uh, for both domestic and foreign investors. So government's role is not to create the jobs, but have a good, you know, a facilitative environment, whether that's policies or programs that would entice investors to come in and, uh, you know, operate businesses. So indeed government will be, because I saw in some papers, no, government should provide jobs. No, that's not, government is not the uh, supposed to be the primary uh, job provider. They can facilitate, no? Mga job matching, job fairs, etc. Skills training, yes. Uh, education or testa that's free for the most part. Pwede yon. But not giving out the jobs. Uh, second point here in terms of uh, interventions, education is free and it is not actually provided by the local government. It's the national government that, 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 that does that. LGUs naman don't uh, operate schools, no? but they can supplement DepEd with uh, capital outlay, meaning the buildings, uh, classrooms, materials, etc., through what is called as the Special Education Fund. No? That is a uh, uh, certain share from the real property tax that local governments uh, get no? and impose. No? And you know, but but of course, the LGs can also fund other things like transportation, free food, feeding programs in school. No? But education is free, public, of course, no? and provided by that. Another thing I saw was, you know, it's actually good not to provide some some uh, opportunities for entrepreneurs, but it cannot be your only intervention to solve livelihood issues. No? Uh, you can't force people to be entrepreneurs because not everyone will want to be or can be a good entrepreneur. Ako, no? Uh, for the life of me, I cannot imagine running my own business. I am not entrepreneurial minded. So you can't just have that one. No, no. So it's you should have a combination of, uh, okay, you'll provide some support if people would want businesses, you know, access to credit, et cetera, et cetera, or tax holidays, et cetera. At the same time, you should also uh, come up with ways to attract businesses so they can open up employment opportunities. So don't force people, no? don't let that be the only way. But of course, offer that as well. Uh, nga, and, and, and some of the papers were very generic. No? There's this American term called motherhood and apple pie, no? meaning it's very generic that people will just say yes, yes, because it's very, very generic. You, people can't say uh, that's a bad idea because you know, very generic. So be more thoughtful. No, I, I saw some people saying, well, the LG should provide them and give them basic capability. So what exactly? So not just for this course, no, but be more specific when you're, when you're asked to come up with interventions. Uh, another one is education is long-term. No, I saw some no, education will solve poverty. Yes, but if that's your only program, it addresses poverty in the long term. Because kids will go to school and then they will graduate before they earn sufficient income. The problem there is, what about the short term if they have problems with incomes? So you have to do a combination of short term and long term interventions. So you know, you combine them, especially if there are pressing issues. And of course, make sure interventions match the diagnosis. Uh, some of you, no, uh, not some, but few, few lang naman, no. Uh, went off tangent, no? they, they had the good diagnosis, good summary of the development problems, and then they went to just propose interventions uh, that didn't really fit the, the, the diagnosis. All right. 
uh, and then assign uh, the the writing part, the organizing part. So first, it's a pay, it's a paper. It's not an essay. No? So, um, maybe a couple of you turn out a paragraph or so. Uh, so it's it's a paper. It's not an essay. But no need for long intros, no. Uh, especially you don't give me if the lesson is about CBMS and the the assignment is about CBMS. Don't give me a, a long a half page intro on CBMS. Uh, we all know what that is already. Um, so no need to I uh, know to 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 discuss that. So you can go straight to the point. So and as I discussed, the guide questions are just guide questions. No? They're not supposed to be or not necessarily the outline of the paper. I say the problem if you just follow it, it becomes very repetitive. Because say you you identify challenges, then you you again go back, you keep repeating things. Eh? If you just follow the guide questions as your outline, it becomes repetitive and hindi siya maganda masyado yung flow. What I really like, no, and some people, people, no, they identified a challenge here and then they went straight to intervention. So challenge, intervention, challenge. So derecho. You don't, you, they didn't have to keep repeating pa the, the major problems that they already discussed. Repetition is okay if it's a long paper, but if it's a two-page paper, then diba, uh, it just becomes repetitive and unnecessary. And, and it, it doesn't become easy to read. And again, follow instructions. No? I, I noticed a few, no? and probably they, they were not uh, attending synchronous sessions. Nga, for the diagnosis part, especially, they relied more on external resources. Para the, ex, the, the assignment or the exam was to test your ability to, to understand and uh, analyze CBMS data. They analyzed external data. Para, huh? But uh, okay lang if you consulted external data for the interventions. Uh, walang problem. Because some I don't expect. Uh, most of you to, to be experts when it comes to interventions. But mind you, no, if you're not regularly attending synchronous sessions, you are still responsible for material covered. So I even had a slide on that. Uh, and I, I, I do my share. No? I post on Canvas the next day, no? um, the, both the recording and the, the, the slides. Ito, another tip on writing. No? Break apart paragraph. No? I saw papers that, you know, super long. No? The first page was just one, almost just one paragraph. So, you know, learn how to sequence properly, break apart, uh, and keep editing yourself. Um, and include, including headers sometimes is actually more useful for the reader. No? Maganda rin, I like the approach sometimes of the headlines approach. Parang you're, you're doing a PowerPoint, no? You provide already a catchy header for the section uh, to summarize what you're going to present. Uh, and then avoid, again, avoid a repetition. No? So if you present data here, you keep presenting it the next page, no wag, because it's just two pages. Um, avoid repetition. All right. So just let me know if you have questions. Um, all right, so with that, we'll move on to uh, the last part of module three, and I'll do a short, a very short introduction of module four, uh, which I'll post again uh, shortly in the next few days. Um, but I, I thought of, now, I was intrigued then, and, and thank you for the question last time. No? Um, I wanted, before we jump into the last uh, session, uh, section of module three, no? which is on the donut economics. I wanted to provide some additional input on investment climate. Uh, this made me think, because I did not explain fully, on even on Canvas, no, um, what has prevented the country, Philippines, no, from having a deeper manufacturing base. And I wanted to discuss that now. Yes, I sent you some materials in an announcement, but I mean, who has time to read uh, hundreds of pages? No? But, uh, but you know, most, most uh, donor funded reports like the World Bank, no? the good thing is they have executive summaries no? uh, that are really helpful. Um, so I'll, I'll do that no? for the first, maybe I'll spend around 10 or 15 minutes uh, doing that. Then we'll finish module three and then module four. Okay. 
Okay, at any point, if you have questions, just, just let me know. No? All right. Uh, before that, sorry, before that, a uh, query lang. I, I got a query, sir. I, I was trying to study the different models. No? I have a question for module three. No? I, I decided to, to answer this on in class no? so that, you know, if you have the same questions. No? Sir, sabi nyo, the poor countries mostly export unprocessed goods, no? which, is, which are sold to the rich countries. No? The processed goods are then brought back the, the, by the peripheral countries at a higher price. What is an example? Of? So you know, this is another example of a very outdated, you know, the dependence model is a very biased and I think very uh, outdated um, uh, paradigm. Ito, ang example dito is sugar. No? There was a joke no, when I was still very young. No? Uh, the Philippines uh, sells or exports sugar very cheaply. And then the United States uh, sells us back a cool aid or tank. <laughs> um, expensive. So yun, it, it, ito yung dynamics of, of trade. Eh. Um, again, there's not a good example, but, but, but the reality is most uh, poorer countries, and we'll learn more about value chains no, in Module 4. Keep this in mind. No. Usually, the problem here is if you lack the manufacturing capacity, the poorer countries end up exporting just raw materials. The problem with raw materials, if you compare them with processed goods, no, the prices and therefore the profits are lower. No? The prices are lower than value, what we call value-added manufactured products. So dito, mas konti kita mo. If you sell naman manufactured products, Malak uh, mas malaki kita mo. No? So dito naman, they're saying na no, very extractive. No? Um, the rich countries, they extract, especially former colonists, they extract raw materials, sugar, coconut, cacao, whatever, no? produce from us, minerals, for example, no? mines, gold, copper, diamonds. No? Africa, for example, mga blood diamonds. No? And no, the rich countries are very good at manufacturing. They process this into something good and then they sell it back to us. So parang loose-loose tayo nun, twice. No? We don't get a fair price for our, um, what do you call this, for our raw commodities. And yet, the affluent class ends up paying more pa sa kanila for the processed stuff, no? for diamonds, for imported whatever, sweets, etc. Et but this has definitely changed. No? Kasi now, you know, let even less developed countries have at least basic manufacturing capacity. So again, this is another outdated modality. No? Uh, a very biased, very, very, parang they think of the former colonies as evil, extracted. No? I will keep extracting what I can from you. I'll get your raw diamonds. I'll polish it um, into, you know, fancy engagement thing, and you have to buy it. <laughs> you know, so, you know, it's a very, very... You know, and I hope this answered your question uh, fully. So again, it just goes to show it's a very outdated model. And um, but again, like in all models, no, we're trying to sort of examine what's good about it. What are the lessons that you can uh, learn from it? One lesson is again going back to manufacturing capacity, so that you can earn better income. Instead of, you learn this more in module four, no? I have a full session on this. Um, the more that you can process your raw materials into something with value added or processed stuff, no? the higher incomes you can get. So again, it all boils down to manufacturing and building capacity within the country so that you're no, not dependent on other countries for process stuff. So that. Ayan. So let's go back to the lesson. Uh, sir, diba, the question was, sir, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Is there a uh, thanks? Okay. All right. No problem. I hope that was a full explanation for you. But again, remember, yun nga, that's, the, that's one of the criticisms of the model. It's not kind of outdated or very evil um, in terms of international relations. 
So, sir, the the concept is, oh, you talk about Rosto, no? emphasizing Rosto, Lewis, emphasizing manufacturing. Uh, the problem is, sir, you were saying, no, the Philippines, no, kasi yun nga, it's 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 a linear stage, no, as economists would always say, no, a country needs to move from a largely agriculture-based economy to a largely manufacturing-based economy before it has a largely service-oriented economy. So dapat multi-stage. Tayo, we leapfrog, no? Especially with the advent of PPOs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, so you see the share, again, going back. Services, uh, it's a huge, uh, the largest chunk of our economy in terms of uh, share of GDP or percentage of GDP. Manufacturing, actually, it has been going down pa nga, if you think about it. Agriculture, of course, matagal nang we've sort of, uh, that has been the laggard for, for, for decades already, at least uh, half a century already. So the question is, sir, did the government really intend for us to uh, to leapfrog and forget about manufacturing? Again, diba, going back to the Rostow stage and Lewis, no? manufacturing really is the growth driver. It, 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 it has very a lot of interlinkages with, with different sectors. It provides the most number of employment. Um, so maganda. Did government really intend? No, actually no. Government, the Philippine government, whether past or present, did not intend for us to skip manufacturing. It's again, yun nga, going back to government as trying to create that environment for businesses to come in or if there are domestic investors no, to create their own businesses. It all boils down to what we call as poor competitiveness. So the question, the basic question is, why did the Philippines fare poorly in terms of manufacturing or investment in general? Competitiveness, uh, the term competitiveness, just think, think in terms of UAAP basketball. So you can argue that, you know, in UAAP, Ateneo, um, uh, the Ateneo team, no, Sinarabena, etc., are more competitive than uh, NUP, no, are more competitive than say the likes of NU or or UE UST, no. Uh, Dati UST mm -hmm. was the most competitive. It just means that you're the most productive, you're the go-to person, you know. Uh, people like you, no, uh, so they invest in you. If it's a country. Uh, competitiveness is just attractiveness. No? You attract more. No? You produce more. You're more economically uh, uh, competitive than people. It's, it's a virtuous cycle. No? Um, there is a, an index. No? Uh, you know, global, global reports like uh, indices. No? UN, the Human Development Index, the MPI, yeah, a lot of indices here. There's another index no, for competitiveness. No? Um, by the World Economic Forum. I'm sure most of you have heard the WEF. So here there are 12 pillars and hundreds of indicators. So they rank countries. Um, we've improved, but not quite there. Especially if you compare us to our ASEAN neighbors. And the problem there is we, our improvement has been very gradual. And if you see, there are some red flags here. Ito, for example, infrastructure has been a red flag for the longest time. Health infrastructure, kaya nga tayo hindi ready for the pandemic. So here, just in this chart, no, infrastructure has been a main culprit for our lack of or our lower competitiveness relative to our neighbors. Kumbaga, um, investors, say foreign investors, would rather choose Vietnam, China, Thailand, no? because our infrastructure has been weak. Kaya nga this administration, I mean, for all its faults, no, I think it's correct to focus on infrastructure build up. Infrastructure, of course, if you're if you're a business, no, you need a road, no, to get to the market. You need mobility. You need a uh, proper logistics, no? How will you ship it, et cetera, et cetera. So one thing is uh, the Philippines has been known to have very high transport and logistics costs. Again, especially compared to our ASEAN neighbors. And you know what's funny? What's funny is uh, you, you see the data, no? 
there are some shipping routes, let's say from uh, the US, I think that's in Louisiana or somewhere in the US. Shipping from Louisiana to Manila is actually cheaper than Davao to Manila. So the internal shipping cost in the Philippines is not friendly to, to, to businessmen here, you know, whether it's domestic or foreign. Logistics, that's another thing. There are monopolies there you know, that, that keep the prices high. You know. The shipping is really bad. And then, of course, poor connectivity. That's physical and digital. No? Ang pangit ng roads natin. And, and you know, we're an archipelagic country. You know, and there's not good connections. No? Not bridges. Yung Roro routes are not that great. Shipping, it's really bad. No? And digital, of course. No? Digital, if you compare, again, ourselves with ASEAN neighbors, uh, we have one of the most expensive internet costs, broadband costs, and at the same time, uh, it's not stable, even in, in Metro Manila. It's getting better, but still. And power, no? Um, power costs deter the private sector. We have this. expensive power in Asia after next to China. And if I'm running a factory 24 hours, energy is expensive. It deters the private sector from investing, especially manufacturing. Power pa lang, di ba? Talo ka na if you're running your factory the whole day. And again, in terms of infrastructure, not just this administration, but since before, no? The capacity of government agencies that are in charge of transportation to build railways, to build uh, bridges, roads, has been weak. Even if they have budget, you've seen this in the papers all the time, no? even if they're given budget, they can only spend at most 50%. Uh, their, their, their technical capacity to carry out large-scale infrastructure projects. Is not. So I, I have big, you know, uh, again, there are a lot of problems with this current administration, but I, I salute the efforts in terms of the infrastructure because it's really good for business. And of course, ordinary people as well. Ito naman, again, it's, it, it's, it's me, no? If I'm a business, whether I'm foreign or, or local, no? I want to open up a business. No? The problem is there are what we call high barriers to entry or other restrictive regulatory measures. So meaning rules. No? When you say regulations, those are simply rules. No? So problema kasi is uh, some of our sectors here are highly, no? um, highly regulated, highly protected. No? Energy, for example, or telecoms, no? energy is owned just by four conglomerates, no? power generation and distribution. Um, telecoms, dalawa lang for the longest time. And then there's now three. No? But Dito is still playing catch up. No? So that, that's the problem. No? Our policies, and I'll get to foreign investment, which we briefly discussed last time. Um, our, our, our policies actually are very out there and they make it difficult for entrants to the marketplace to enter and compete in a sector. No? Sometimes they have onerous uh, laws, onerous regulations. No? The WEF ranks us as very low, no? bottom 20 for market competition. So it's hard. If I'm a business, no, they had okay, if I want to enter into a market, especially if it's a saturated market and there are major players there already. So that's one. No? So ito, going now to the foreign, no, how to attract foreign investors. Naman, no? There are high bars entry as well no? in, in our local laws, even the constitution. No, policies that restrict high foreign ownership. No? There's a, in most sectors, no, there's a 40% maximum no? uh, in terms of foreign ownership. No? Pero the, the very developed countries like Europe, Western European countries, Singapore, US, I can go to the US if I have the money and I can own land 100%. My business can own the entire business. Here, no. Many sectors, no. 60-40, yeah, no? 60% owned by Filipinos. It's still a, an outdated uh, protectionist stance of the, the current constitution. At that time, kasi we were very, uh, they thought no, it was being patriotic. No? 
to 1980. Pero it's pretty bad. Uh, we we have become laggards, which leads to more economic activity and jobs. So we are the most the most restrictive in terms of foreign investment, no? Uh, foreigners setting up shop in Asia. And, you know, again, I mentioned this last time. No? Um, I think there was also another survey where out of 53 countries, we were 51st. No? We were just ahead of Palestine and Libya. So, you know, the, 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 the countries that have opened up really well uh, did, did better than us. Singapore is very open. So oh, foreigners can really own stuff. No? Vietnam, same, Thailand. Tayo, wala. We are laggards. In Asia. Ito, you the last. Uh, in terms of attractiveness. I think Myanmar yung last, if I'm not mistaken. This was just yesterday in the news. So, yun nga. So again, it's not government, ah, sige, let's forget about my, no, it's actually the policies, whether intentional or not, no, um, that has led to all of these things, no? variables deterring business, from weak infrastructure to weak policies for enticing domestic and foreign investment. And regulations also, no, uh, in, in, in development parlance, we call this the ease of doing business, as, that's why I also shared the doing business report of the world. Here, gusto mo na magnegosyo, government rules and red tape are difficult. A WEF rank, a second worst in terms of the bureaucratic procedures to start a business. So parang, hey nga, it's, it's funny, I want to invest, I want to have the economy, but government rules make it hard for me to do so. Starting a business, it's really, really bad. No? It's really hard. No? And I saw this for myself firsthand. No? I was a city advisor based in Batanga City for a year, no? uh, a few years ago. No? So I saw this myself. No? Even local governments, you're, you're at the same time, you're trying to attract investors, no? both domestic and foreign. But all of your paperwork makes it hard for them and it makes it unattractive. So that's another layer of, uh, of, uh, layer of deterrence. No? Even customs procedures are difficult no, compared to our, our um, counterparts. No? Our ranking is 99 compared to, let's say, 57 of Malaysia, of Thailand, 61 of Malaysia. No? Logistics, again, going back to infrastructure, were very poor. And at least before the create bill, no? our corporate tax rate. No? Of course, if you're running a business, you're also, you also want to see... No, which country, you know, if you're a multinational, which country offers the lower taxes? No? So that's another factor. We used to have, you know, before the create uh, law was passed earlier this year, we used to have the highest corporate income tax rate. In the but now this is down to 25 or 20% 20 for uh, small businesses. And lastly, of course, uh, of course, Businesses, whenever they, they, they decide to enter into a business, whether that's domestic or foreign, they see whether government is, 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 is facilitative or not. Whether government is, uh, has good laws, whether governments can uh, implement projects that they promised, you know, whether they're less corrupt, uh, whether their laws are very onerous and they, they only benefit the existing uh, uh, monopolies. So ito, there are some charts. So there's another index, World Governance Index. Now, if you're a if you're a data geek, you no, know, like me, or a an index geek, you no, know, these are some useful uh, annual reports. You know, annual for the most part. So even though know, for regulatory quality, the quality of regulations, whether they make it easy or hard, you no, know, for businesses and people, were also low. Diba? Uh, the closer you are to 100, the better. Uh, wait lang. Uh, and then government effectiveness also. There's a question. I'll, I'll answer your question later. Uh, um, government is effective by in, in implementing infrastructure projects, etc., etc. We're also low. We're only ahead of Indonesia, 
Pakistan. Of course, Laos and the Myanmar, obviously. And corruption has been a problem since the longest time. And they're arguing that in the, this current administration, it has gone up. There's a question that I see on the chat box. Hi, sir. I would like, just like to ask, why is the Philippine government apprehensive in enabling foreigners to own land and property in the country? That's a very uh, passionate debate. No? Um, it all boils down to uh, patriotism. When the 1987 constitution was framed by the CONCON, the Constitutional Convention, they included certain restrictions, no? uh, which included foreigners cannot own land 100%, and foreigners um, cannot uh, own more than uh, 40% in certain economic sectors, in most economic sectors. So telecoms, for example, uh, mass media is 0%. So iba iba. It depends on the sector. At that time, we were thinking, no, we have to promote our own industries. The problem with that, no, the problem with that is uh, foreign investment and you go back to your Korean example, no? they open foreign investment because you have new technology, you have more advanced technology. Dito and it's very scared. No, no we, the, sec, the Filipino businesses will lose, uh, will lose out, will, will fold up, etc. So a lot of fear mongering. No? So that has persisted. And currently what happened was hindi lang fear mongering, no? even the those who are benefiting, the rich conglomerates who are benefiting from the status quo, are also, you know, they're now accused no, of actually funding or, or supporting some of these congressmen or senators no, not to open up the economy because they're benefiting. No. I won't name names, no, but that, that's, that's an accusation right now. Fortunately, but it has been a long struggle no, since the Aquino administration up to the Duterte administration. Uh, the there has both presidents have been supporting more liberalization. So there are three pending bills in Congress right now, no? uh, trying to increase foreign investment in telecoms, in in, in uh, uh, transportation, no? uh, also trying to uh, increase more uh, uh, lower the capitalization requirement for foreign retail trade and also general foreign investment. So there are three bills. You know, two of them might make it. You know, we might see it enacted by the end of the year. Um, uh, the telecoms, the liberalization of telecoms and um, transport, maybe not. Uh, there are some sectors that are uh, citing national security considerations. Para, oh, China might own more. Ganito, ganito. But you know, the foreign chambers, the the good ones, the American, the Canadian chambers, Japanese, they're all saying, no, the, the draft bill itself contains national security provisions that are adequate to prevent those things. From. So it's not, it has, it's, it's a history of patriotism that basically enabled us to shoot ourselves in the foot. So it was, it was born out of that protectionist constitution and that has filled, cascaded down to our laws and we're still trying to slowly open up some more. Because nakita nga nila, Thailand opened up, uh, Vietnam is now opening up, uh, Singapore is a super open economy, Korea, if you in invite foreign investors, it will lead to good things, more manufacturing, more investment, definitely more jobs, etc. Yung land, that's another, you know, that's a, another uh, debate kasi para, oh, Ano yun? Alipin kami sa sariling lupa. Di ba? Parang, oh, you, you foreigners will just gobble all the lands. Paano ng Pinoy? That's a very romanticized debate. So it's a very emotional. No? So you don't see any, any law trying to amend that or free up or liberalize the land from foreign ownership. Medyo malabo yan. But businesses, we were, we're, we're at least making some headway. Again, so I, I hope this is useful additional learning. Again, it's not part of Canvas, no, but I just thought since I, 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 I realized that some of you or many of you were actually interested last week, I thought of just sharing these things. Um, 
There's another question. Uh, thanks for being very interested. Hello, sir. Just curious to what degree do these protective policies work? Aren't there ways that foreign investors elude these policies? Yes. Yes. No. Um, you know, foreigners have been known to use dummies. No? Um, for many have been accused. No? For example, smart PLDT have been accused to be uh, uh, puppets of the Indonesian. No? So may, may ganon. May ganon. No? But of course, Many investors, especially American and Europeans, they want the legit way, not the dummy way of engaging. So many, many, many have. So there are there are workarounds. But you know, if you're a business, you want great, you want direct control for the most part. But some have resorted to workarounds, like having dummy corporations. Yeah. All right. Thanks for the questions. All right. Okay, um, if you have other questions on that, no, feel free to ask them later at the end of class. No? But let's go to the lesson proper again. So just I just wanted to, to uh, finish uh, tonight, no? module three. Uh, we've, we've scanned uh, all the different paradigms no? from very growth, economically focused paradigms no? to very, should I call it, malicious uh, paradigms like the... Marxist uh, dependency model, et cetera, et cetera. Now, uh, for, to cap it all off, no, let's study the donut economics. Because no? when we started talking about the SDGs, no, it was all about, teka muna, no? we also have to take into account sustainability. It's not just as you get, let's keep growing, economic activity, et cetera. But wait, when Al Gore became popular, no, people became, no, but even before, no, people started becoming more conscious of the environment. We might be hurting the environment. It might be uh, we might be you know paying a price no, for unabated growth. And now we have this. No. This is uh, some some Soxai professors use this as their main use this paradigm as the main uh, framework for the entire course or the book even of Kate Rower. Uh, for those of you, you know, if you can help me summarize, for those of you. What did you learn though? What is the donut economics paradigm? What is it? If you finish covering this on campus. What, what is it? Sige Marco, go ahead. So it's like um we need to remain within uh, a certain boundaries. Like from the TED talk, um, they were saying that uh, a lot of us are just like romanticized with like forever growth. But then like, um, that pursuit of that forever growth uh, is already making us breach boundaries like climate change, land conservation, and others. So we need to stay within these boundaries in order to like balance economic growth as well as like uh, the other negative effects of economic growth. That's good, Marco. Anyone else would like to add? Amaya, go ahead. And the Anoa saying, we can't just want the ones in the middle. We can't just want the circle in the middle. We also need to take into consideration, we, like we also need to want for the outside layer to, to proliferate in our world or else we won't even be able to achieve the, the middle, uh, the center goals for ourselves. Sir, you're muted. Sorry, there you go. So yeah, that, that's correct. No? And, and going back to the TED talk, no, um, I, I was fortunate. No, I didn't plan it. No, perfect. Because the TED talk me Kate Brower started with Rosto. So maganda yon, full circle. No? We started with Rosto, module three. We ended with a critique of Rosto. No? Uh, again, tama kayo. You're both correct. No, Marco was more discussing more about the outer circle and Amaya was also talking about the inner circle and there's that balance. So just to summarize, for those of you who haven't covered this or you want uh, just a, uh, a good summary of this. Why is it a donut? Um, again, it, it's, it's a very cool model because it really looks like a donut. And if you think about it, there's a donut because there's an inner circle 
which is hollow, there's an outer circle. Uh, any donut, of course, will have a finite space, the outer whatever circumference, but I forgot my um, geometry. <laughs> um, yeah, so we start with the inner circle, butas. Butas means there's a gap. So the problem with humanity right now is we're doing this at the same time, actually. No? Um, humanity actually is despite its efforts, no, it's actually having a massive, no, globally, and you see this for pretty much all countries, we're having a shortfall in terms of providing people adequate amounts of these things, no, food, water, health, uh, income, education, etc., etc. Yeah, butas, no, it's a shortfall. No. But it's funny that while we're uh, while we're short of giving people this, no? at the same time, we're overshooting certain things. Naman, no? We're overshooting what we call an ecological ceiling. No? It's outside the door. No? Diba? You're, you're already short of something, but you're overshooting on other things. No? We keep, no? uh, because yun nga, they, the criticism for us, though, we, it's, uh, it's econo economy is king. No? economic growth, et cetera, et cetera. So the one problem of that is maybe that economic growth is not inclusive. It doesn't benefit everyone. So they're short for it. And at the same time, you know, you're hurting the environment because you're, you're, you're blind. No? You're just like a horse with, with what do you call that? In blinders or whatever you call it. You just focus on that. You're forgetting that you might be affecting uh, the environment. So that's 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 the basic premise of that. So climate change, biodiversity loss. No, you have mining. You have uh, freshwater uh, resources being depleted. But there's another thing. Uh, of course, Dr. Raworth wasn't just uh, sort of providing a a picture or, or an uh, sort of uh, an illustration of what's happening. She was also arguing, no, kaya nga donut, there's this middle ground, no, the balance. No. She was arguing actually of two things. No. One is, yes, the probably environmentally, the old environmentally friendly uh, paradigm was, okay, I will uh, uh, ensure that there's good economic activity and at the same time try to address shortfall, but I will do no harm. To the environment. That's the old. Um, that's the old thinking no? when you're trying to be environmentally conscious or friendly. Do no harm. But she was proposing something beyond that, no? because that becomes passive. That becomes passive. No? If you want to be more activist, wait. Maybe while we're trying to address these things, no. Maybe we can also not just do no harm. But we may actually be addressing these problems. No? It's not just overshooting, but actually reining it back in. Going, not letting it, you know, helping contribute to, to less overshooting. So she wanted to go one step further. It's not just do no harm. No? But uh, while you're trying to address this, you also not just do no harm, but you actively promote a better environment for the future. And one of the important things no, that she was uh, trying to promote, no, and this is now very, very popular, no, it's the circular economy. For example, no, let's illustrate one example first no, for you to get the sort of the, the, the model here. I like to start with examples because uh, usually it becomes, it becomes more un easily understood. Ito, diba? While you're trying to, ito, renewable energy, sorry, renewable energy, one way by which you can actively address a shortfall and at the same time address or prevent overshooting or rein it in further is by renewable energy. You're addressing a basic need, you boot us. No, with renewable while you're addressing climate change or even air pollution. 
Let's say, for example, you're using windmills no, or, or ano, there's less pollution because if you burn coal, no, uh, that leads to both pollution and climate change. So that's a very good example. No? It's an active way. It's not just passive na do no harm. No, it's actually do better instead of do no harm. So there are other things. No? The basic premise of the circular economy is circle no? to the extent that you can continue reusing, recycling, less disposal of resources, the better. So you have recycling, upcycling, upcycling no? So supply chain, no, you see sometimes packages, especially in the US, no, made with 99% recycled materials. No? So something like that. No? Uh, you, less toxic materials, no, pro, project design no, that are more environmentally friendly. No? So yun, it's less using, more reusing, less disposal. The best model usually, the often cited model is Singapore. No? In Singapore, I'm not sure if I included this on canvas, they drink their pee, but not, you know, not directly. No? So um, their wastewater, no, what they flush down their toilets, no, uh, urine, sorry if you're eating, no, urine and you know, number two. That wastewater actually gets processed and that's recycled to their drinking water system. So you're addressing, diba? You're addressing both a water need and, you know, you're not, because the problem is some countries who are desperate for water, they result, they, they result to desalination. No? They get water from the sea and they desalinate. That's expensive and that's not actually environmentally friendly to, the, to, to biodiversity. So that's another example. Singapore because is a good example because... The good thing with Singapore, they don't have a lot of natural resources. And you know, desperation is the mother of invention. So yeah, that's the circular economy. Really lots of interesting stuff. And as you learn later no, in module five, no, and we talked about this briefly in module one, there's money to be made actually here. No? So it's not sacrificing the economy actually. No? There are there are promising profit market-based models now where you can actually get profits while addressing the shortfall and addressing uh, environmental issues by being active and not just being passive. So the circular economy is one example. You, you, you have tons of examples. No? Upcycling has become vogue. No? Like you have uh, recycled uh, materials being converted into bags, et cetera, et cetera. So they're making money while following the principle of less disposable, dis disposing and uh, reusing. So that's, that's the circular economy in a nutshell and the donut economics in a nutshell. So it's not just presenting what's happening, but it's arguing that, yes, you can actually be creative in coming up with ideas to solve the shortfall and at the same time actively not passively, yeah, addressing, helping address the overshooting. All right. And we end with this. No? It's just a short introduction before I post uh, module four. Uh, each administration, no, when they, uh, whoever will win in 2022, each administration since, I don't know, since the past six, seven administrations have done what we call medium term Philippine development plan. And NEDA usually is the, is the main coordinator or chair of this. Um, so uh, it's called the medium term Philippine development plan. It used to be MTPDP. Now it's, they ditched the MT. No? It's now PDP. Um, you remember Ambition Natin. No? So here is the current one. You remember this, and this is supposed to end next year. No? And uh, most likely, the new administration will come up with a new medium term. No? They will uh, assume office in 2022. They'll probably take a few months. So it's 2023 to 2028. So again, hope the anchor is still the ambition 2014 no matatag, maginhawat pa natag na buhay. And the main thing that they want is to lay down the foundation for inclusive growth, 
you know, we've been learning about uh, economic growth, no, but it it it's it benefits not just a few but most people, no. Uh, high trust and mind you, this was created before pala, no? just just as an aside, before the pandemic. And a globally competitive knowledge economy. So there are three legs here. No? Uh, here's the social fabric. No? It's just you know support to people. No? But I wanted to focus on here. No? Inequality reducing transformation and increasing the growth potential. No? So a lot of the concepts that we've, we've studied already are, 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 are resurfacing here. No? So here, no? and I, I encircled in red no? uh, the main things that we will cover in module four. If we had more time, if this was a full four-year or two-year course, we could have gone through all. But no, I don't want to bore you if we cover all. So here, number one really is expanding economic opportunities and increasing the access to that. It's not just uh, having economic opportunities, but people having the right human capital, for example, to access that, the economic opportunities. Um, and you know, of course, technology and stimulating innovation, high tech stuff as well. Advanced technology, now, as we learned from uh, Rosto and, and, and other models. And here, no, we're going to study in module four um, economic opportunities in the area of agriculture and agribusiness. And we're also, uh, the fourth part of uh, module four, we're also going to talk about economic opportunities for small and medium enterprises. I included that because you guys are management students. So one day you will probably be starting your own business or, uh, or will probably work for a, 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 maybe a smaller or a medium enterprise or even a large one. Uh, so those two things, we'll, we'll study that. And we'll also study because again, going back to the investment climate, no, for, the, for the government to help facilitate these things, no, you need a good environment, no? good policies, macroeconomic stability, meaning lang naman. There's, there's okay labor figures, there's okay inflation figures. No? Uh, there's a good policy framework for uh, promoting competition. We're going to study here fiscal policy. No? The word fiscal lang naman is synonymous to, on, the, on one hand, government revenues, how governments earn money, and on the flip side, how governments spend the money. That's fiscal for you. When you hear the word fiscal, it's all about government money, earning money, or spending money. And then lastly, we'll also, because you know, human capital, you know, the people, the population itself is important to achieving this. No? We'll also talk about population and demography. And then some of the recent problems when it comes to population management. Uh, and your second assignment you know, as a group you know, will revolve around these four themes. So this will be module four. First part is agriculture, rural development, and agrarian reform. Second is fiscal. Third is population and demography. And last is SME development, which will be the shortest. SME stands for small and medium enterprises. And all of your uh, just a preview of your assignment two, which I'll post together with module four, is you will be critiquing a law related to this. Yeah. So that's module four for you. Um, I, again, I will post it in the next few days. All right. It's a short class. I just wanted to provide additional information. I hope you found these uh, additional data sources and information useful as added knowledge. Any questions or comments before we end? None from me. Meron pa? None from me. I think no more questions. Again, if you're interested in, in, in uh, diving deeper into some of these things, feel free to email. Okay. All right, guys. Have a good evening. Uh, have a good dinner as well. See you next Thank week. You. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Bye, sir. Thank you.